am out in the Oregon high desert, uh, just outside of Bend. Elevation's about 3,000 feet, and this is an area that I love to come tracking. And the ground is so, so sandy and dusty. It always just holds so much more of the animal's movements and helps us pick up on the stories of what animals have been running around through here. So I'm just gonna go for a walk today and uh, see what we find. So we've got a couple of good scats here. We got this one, this one, and then one a bit up the trail over there. And seeing a handful of scats like this is a common thing when you're out on a trail or a road. Um, the animals will often scat on top of each other, either same animal in the same spot or a different animal comes along, smells it, th thinks it's interesting and wants to leave its own um, marking as well. And in this case, um, in terms of identifying the scat, we have the added benefit of seeing the tracks as well. These are fairly fresh, um, but the ground is pretty hard, so they didn't register that well. But you all should be able to place this track in the canine family. And using my hand for size um, and knowing what animals are around in this area and taking a look at these scats, um, we can identify these as coyote. Even without the tracks, some things that tell me these are coyote scats are the really twisted uh, or like ropey nature. It looks like it's just been um, twisted and sort of uh, messed up. And it also has um, a real pointy end there. The contents are full of um, fur and bone. If there were any seeds or vegetative matter, that would help us classify this as a coyote as well. Another animal to consider would be bobcat. These are in the right size range and in general the right shape and often it's impossible to distinguish those in the field with 100% certainty. So it's definitely okay to say that these are, you know, likely coyote, but possibly bobcat as well. Okay, I walked just a minute off trail and found this deer laying here that's been completely torn apart. There's hair all over the area. It looks like this deer has been moved around uh, at least a couple times since it's been killed. Maybe 10 yards away, there's this area as well which looks to be the site of the original kill. We've got all the fur here. And then this pile that looks like just sawdust over here. This is gonna be, you know, the insides, the, the stomach contents. I'm not sure on that specifically um, from the deer when it, was, when it was killed. And this to me looks like, you know, a handful of animals have, have picked on it, but originally um, a mountain lion taking down this buck. And I'm guessing that based on um, all of those insides being, being pulled out so neatly and all that fur being plucked at that site we just looked at um, with the inside contents, all that vegetative matter being neatly pulled out. Um, and also all of these ribs being cut pretty close to the, to the spine. Um, sort of typical cougar feeding be behavior. But then with how much this carcass has been moved around, um, it certainly looks like lots of coyotes and, and other animals have been in here as well to feed on it since. We've got a good scat here. I'm not sure exactly who left this one. It looks quite small to be cougar, um, but certainly more of a meat, a meaty scat. Um, so maybe the coyotes getting in here pretty soon after the cougar left because um, this doesn't really have any fur in it. There's some bone shards in there. Uh, that was super cool. Definitely not something that I get to see uh, every day. Um, it really helps you learn a lot more about the animals that are out here and their different um, patterns and behaviors and how they feed and sort of all the different wildlife that will come through after a mountain lion takes down an animal like that. Here's one that I'm guessing all of you are familiar with. Two tracks here from a mule deer heading that way to the left. Something else you can think about is, is this a male or female deer? On this one, I'm not positive, but I'm noticing that this track is significantly larger than that track. So the larger track there is gonna be the front track of the animal and the smaller one is gonna be the hind. And many animals follow that pattern. Uh, cats and dogs and hoofed animals will all follow that same pattern because they carry more of their weight in the front of their body, whether that's the organs, the head, or any um, antlers in this case for that of a buck. So that's what I would guess for those tracks, but definitely not 100%. Um, you always want to kind of be 
cautious and not um, extrapolating too much from from what you find but that's something fun to look for uh, when you see a deer track and think oh it's just a deer track and move on always try to think about what other sorts of information you can you can pull from that let's take a look at this track now it should be similar in shape to one we've already seen from the mule deer but significantly bigger and also a little bit wider this is from an elk it's still got those two hooves really firm creating a deep impression in the soil there and you know three to four times the size of a deer track okay first feather that we've got here this is an awesome find um this is the tail feather from a red-tailed hawk it's a really distinctive feather it's big for size right so we're looking at a big animal um, to start with in that distinctive sort of burnt orange or red color um, hopefully can cue you into this being a red-tailed hawk along with that black stripe at the top. And if we look at this feather from a side angle, you'll notice that there's a slight downward tilt toward the quill on the right side of the screen. Um, and that is a feature of many tail feathers as well, where they're kind of flat up here and then they dip down toward the, the end of the quill there. Okay, we've got a scat here in the middle of the road and two pieces right there. I'll zoom in so you can get a sense of scale. This thing is huge. I mean, it's two fingers wide. That's over an, it, over an inch in width. And then we've got this second piece over here. And just for a little more context, that scat was in the middle of the road. So combining um, these bits of information with the size of the scat, particularly the width, because that's more indicative of the animal that it came from rather than the length or the overall volume. And the placement of the scat and the contents, which look to be some some meat, some, some hair and some fur. Um, I'm wondering if that was a wolf scat. They will frequently run um, these forest roads that just cut through for, for ease of travel um, and they'll scat on them as well to just sort of serve as a communication uh, scent post. And mountain lions are not known to frequently scat in the middle of a road like that. So that's why they're not too high on my list for that scat. Okay, now we've got the skull here. I just picked up fairly small skull. This is from um, some sort of rabbit, I'm guessing in the cottontail family. It's possible it's from a hare. I'll have to use my skull ID book um, back at home to figure it out for sure. But some things I'm looking at to identify this are um, what we call fenestration, those sort of like sinewy, really thin, almost web-like parts. That's um, key to the lagomorph family. Um, something else I'm using is the, the tooth structure. These teeth are actually incredibly long rabbit teeth will grow for their whole life they're known as ever growing teeth as opposed to human teeth which once we get our adult ones they they stay there they stop growing but the rabbit teeth will continue growing and they'll wear down they'll continue growing just until they until they wear um they'll wear down you know at at the tips and then just continue growing i don't know if you can see all the way in there just how long um those teeth are and then one other thing we can look at is at the incisors here. They've got the two big ones on top there, but then there's these two little holes underneath. The rabbits will actually have two smaller um, incisors set just behind the big ones. So all those features along with just the general impression, the overall shape and size tells us that this is a rabbit. Okay, we've got another skull here that I'm going to prop up on the log so it's easier to view this one just a touch larger than the rabbit skull uh, but some distinctly different features you know there's none of that fenestration the tooth structure is completely different this skull has a couple incisors up at the front some giant canines there and then um, these carnassials here which uh, aren't flat like like the molars that we have. They're pretty um, 
sharp, so this is an animal that uh, is not necessarily, has more of a carnivorous diet rather than an herbivorous or an omnivorous diet. Um, so this, I believe, is from a striped skunk, and again, I'll have to check the book when I get back to be sure on that. Uh, now I've got both of the skulls lined up here side by side for a quick comparison. So that rabbit skull, significantly smaller, but also just such a different structure. And skulls are one of those things that I've just been beginning to learn. Um, but the more that you find them and pick them up and study them or look at them in books, um, they really do start to look just fundamentally different. Here's a great example of two different animal signs that, that go together. Unclear whether these were made at the same time, but here we have uh, the tracks from the deer and their scat as well. Um, the scat is pretty distinctive. You've got these round pellets, sometimes with a little nub um, on the end that are, you know, all smaller than my fingernail. The only thing we'd confuse them with is elk scat, which hopefully I'll find some of today. Um, and their tracks similarly are pretty distinctive. Most people will know these as like a heart shaped with those two um, hooves there. Uh, and it looks like we've got a couple different deer walking through here, two or, or three, I would guess. So I was walking this way and see if anything jumps out at you just visually here. And for me, what caught my eye was the bright spot right there. And we zoom in to see that these are the, the ends, uh, two of the quills from a small bird that was likely killed or plucked um, in this area. We've got a couple good examples of the feathers in here. They're all pretty small. Um, well, of a mid-sized bird, these are, these are robin-sized feathers, but the coloring on them, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that these are from a Townsend Solitaire. The coloring that I'm seeing, this sort of patch on the lower side with a little bit of um, color on that leading edge as well is from the thrush family. So varied thrushes, um, robins, hermit thrush, Swainson's thrush, um, and the Townsend solitaire, which doesn't have thrush in its name, will all follow this sort of pattern. Um, so know knowing this sort of general shape and size of bird feathers and also what birds are present in your given location um, will really help you understand what kind of bird these came from. Here's some good tracks for you all to be familiar with. Um, these are still deer tracks, it's just a different presentation. These two toes, instead of being pinched together and forming that heart shape, are really splayed out, and that often happens when a deer is moving faster. When it gets spooked by something, when it's running to or normally away from something, those toes will spread out a little bit to give them a little bit more grip and stability. Um, and hopefully you also notice these marks back here. These are the dew claws. So deer actually have four toes and two of them are set um, higher back on the uh, sort of the back of the leg. And these also will only register and make that imprint in the ground when the animal's running faster. You can picture it really like stretching out um, and just digging in and that, that forward angle of the leg as it's reaching out along with the additional pressure um, helps those two dew claws um, stick in there. Thanks for watching everybody. Hope you learned something new today. Maybe saw something that inspired you to get out to your local woods um, and take a little wander and see what you find. Thanks for watching and keep on tracking.